sorry, but I don't think I know you. I believe it's my husband you know. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 underrated classic Hollywood movies. What's the trouble? Nothing. It's good to see you again. For this list, we'll be looking at the most notable forgotten films from the golden age of Hollywood that we think deserve a little extra attention. Did we miss any of your favorite oldie gems? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10, In a Lonely Place. Were you interested in Mr. Steele because he's a celebrity? No, not at all. I noticed him because he looked interesting. I like his face. Humphrey Bogart and Gloria Graham were staples of the noir genre throughout the 1940s and 50s, but this movie starring them both is one you might have forgotten about. In a Lonely Place puts both Bogart and Graham neatly into usual roles. He's a beleaguered screenwriter accused of murder, and she's the mysterious woman next door who he falls in love with. However, the movie slightly turns the noir archetypes on their heads. Do attractive young women often admire your face, Mr. Steele? Well, if they do, they aren't usually as outspoken as Miss Gray. Graham's Laurel Gray has the femme fatale look, but the audience is way more wary of Bogart's Dixon Steele. The film keeps you guessing as to Steele's innocence or guilt right up until the very end, delivering a deeply effective story in the process. So how are you taking to Las Vegas? I just started to pack when you came. I thought you said you were in bed. No, no, oh, I know. Are I you packing to go on a honeymoon? Yes, of course. Or are you packing to run away from me like you ran away from Mr. Baker? Stop it, Dix. I can't take any more of it. Number 9, Out of the Past. Double Indemnity, The Maltese Falcon, Laura. These are all titles that are counted as some of the best film noirs of all time. These are movies you've probably heard of, but you might not be familiar with Out of the Past. And then I saw her coming out of the sun, and I knew why we didn't care about that 40 grand. Though considered one of the very best of the genre, Jacques Tourneur's masterpiece is not often mentioned in the same breath as some of those other movies, but it deserves to be. Can you still listen? I can hear. Well, you told me about your business. Well, mine is a little more precarious, and I earn considerably more. Starring Robert Mitchum, Kirk Douglas, and Jane Greer, the movie was critically acclaimed at the time of its release. The cinematography in particular projects a dark, sinister feel that makes Out of the Past a must-watch. I told you, I'm tired of getting pushed around. You'll only get yourself out of breath, won't eat Joe? Cut it low. Your move now is to do a little thinking, a little talking. Number 8, Key Largo. Over the course of the 1940s, Lauren Bacall and Humphrey Bogart made a number of unforgettable films together. The last of these, and perhaps the most overlooked, is 1948's Key Largo. But a cause isn't lost as long as someone is willing to go on fighting. Well, I'm not that someone. But you are. You may not want to be, but you can't help yourself. The film noir is about a gangster, played by the late, great Edward G. Robinson and his crew, as they clash with Bogart's Frank McCloud. All of the performances in the film are stellar, and the chemistry between Bogey and Bacall is as electric as ever, but one person arguably steals the show. I wouldn't have any entrance. They'd, they'd play the intro in the dark, and, and a spot would come on, and there I'd be. As Gay Dawn, a struggling singer, Claire Trevor delivers one of the most vulnerable and committed performances of the decade. The proof is in the fact that she won an Oscar for her efforts. I'll be good luck to you like I was before. I won't let you go without me. You've got to take me with you. You've got to. You've got to. Number seven, humoresque. Who's that? I don't know. Someone new. Well, with all that talent, he'll probably end up in jail. On their own, Joan Crawford and John Garfield were some of the most famous Hollywood actors of their day. Together, they were nearly invincible. In 1946's Humoresque, Garfield plays Paul, a young violinist who falls in love with his older patroness, Crawford's Helen. It's a good old-fashioned melodrama, with both actors delivering stirring performances. Helen, I'm tired. It's been a long day. Only the usual deadly lengths. I want to get home and get some rest. Oh, go ahead. You're coming with me. Leave me alone. Go on back to your music. I'm tired of playing second fiddle to the ghost of Beethoven. Crawford, in particular, received rave reviews at the time. It's easy to see why, given her ability to provide depth and feeling to a character that had the ability to come off quite cartoonish. We'd also be remiss not to mention the lovely score from Oscar-nominated Franz Waxman. In other words, this movie has a lot going for it. We're not sure why folks seem to overlook it these days. I love all 
the many charms about you. Above all, I want my, I want my arms. arms. <laughs> Number six, make way for tomorrow. There were two important Leo McCary films released in 1937. One, The Awful Truth, won him the Academy Award for Best Director. But it was the more overlooked Make Way for Tomorrow that McCary deemed his masterpiece. And Make Way for Tomorrow was always one of his favorites. I think it was right up there. The film follows an older couple, played by Victor Moore and Beulah Bondi, who lose their home and must figure out new living arrangements. It earned fine reviews at the time of its release, but has risen in the popular estimation since. Fine time to tell us. Funnily enough, when McCary won his Best Director statue, he thanked the Academy before saying that they had awarded him for the wrong film. So we know where his loyalty lay. Clearly, even he thought Make Way for Tomorrow was underrated. But your father and I thought that, well, no matter what happened, that we'd always be... Oh, never mind what we thought. Number five, Fail Safe. Sidney Lumet is one of the most celebrated filmmakers in American history. Failsafe was made toward the beginning of his career, but the director still had plenty of experience under his belt when it was released in 1964. Code sequence correct for today, sir. Signal is go. We will now both open our operational orders. It was regarded well by critics and is an excellent film. So why did it perform poorly at the box office? Many attribute that failure to the success of Stanley Kubrick's Dr. Strangelove. Yo, oh, you oh, you you Gentlemen, you can't fight in here. This is the war room. Much like Dr. Strangelove, Failsafe centers on the threat of nuclear war, but in a dramatic fashion instead of satirical. But Dr. Strangelove came out first, and the rest was history. Still, we think Lumet's picture deserves more love. What do we say to them, Mr. Chairman? Accidents will happen. I won't accept that. Number four, The Bigamist. There's a plethora of female filmmakers from Hollywood's golden age who were breaking barriers long before we might think. One of those women was the multi-talented Ida Lupino, who notably starred in and directed The Bigamist. I needed a job and Hannigan needed someone to liven up the joint. You can see I've been a howling success. This was rather historic in the context of U.S. sound films, reportedly marking a first for a woman directing herself in her own film. Lupino received stellar reviews for her efforts, and The Bigamist has only grown in cultural and critical acclaim since its 1953 release. Oh, she couldn't wait for me all the grisly details. Made a wonderful story out of it. You know, just like the Sunday papers. It's easy to see why, given the thoughtful filmmaking that clearly went into bringing the sordid story of Harry, Eve, and Phyllis to life. Given all that, we'd say the movie deserves a more consistent place in the modern mainstream conversation. He's looking at you, Phyllis. Number three, The Scarlet Empress. If you like historical dramas and Marlena Dietrich, you might want to check this one out. The film follows the life of Catherine the Great as portrayed by the equally boundary-challenging actress. Suppose I didn't want to tell you who I really am. What would happen? On a night like this, anything might happen, if I'm fortunate. Well, Lieutenant, you are fortunate, very. It was directed by the Austrian-American filmmaker Josef von Steinberg, who is perhaps best remembered today for his work with Dietrich. However, this project in particular is well remembered for its unique style of lighting and the stunning, elaborate pieces that were designed. The result is ornate and stylistic, a true feast for the eyes no matter how you slice it. You have made me very happy today, Catherine. And I hope you will continue to make me happy. We'll forgive anyone who isn't familiar with the film, but we will say it's worth getting acquainted with. Should it become unavoidable, I think I have weapons that are far more powerful than any political machine. Number two, the women. Some of the funniest gals in town came through all the way back in 1939, though we don't hear people mentioning them very often. Peggy, do we know how the men talk about us when we're not around? I've heard rumors. Exactly. And, uh... While we're on the subject, have either of you wondered whether the master of this maison might not be straight? George Cukor's comedy masterpiece had a stacked cast, featuring the likes of Norma Shearer, Joan Crawford, and Rosalind Russell, just to name a few. It offers a bitingly funny look at the trials and tribulations of the rich wives of New York City's elite. There's a name for you ladies, but it isn't used in high society. 
outside of a kennel. Each woman delivers a uniquely humorous take on their character, from Crawford's social climbing counter girl to Shearer's cheerful, initially oblivious housewife. But Russell might just steal the show with her impeccable comedic timing and slapstick smarts. Were this film released today, we bet it would blow up. So it's time to revisit the oft-forgotten gem. Oh, isn't it wonderful to see all our lives so settled temporarily? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Indiscreet You've heard of Notorious, the sexy spy thriller from famed director Alfred Hitchcock, but have you heard of the second film that Ingrid Bergman and Cary Grant made together years later? Ten seconds late. Last night it was seven, the night before five. I can see the handwriting on the wall. You're cooling. Hardly. If you haven't, we highly recommend you add it to your movie list, because it's wonderful. The acting pair's undeniable chemistry aside, Indiscreet couldn't be more different from Notorious. You do want to hear the case for both sides, don't you? A sorely underrated romantic comedy, it stars Grant and Bergman as Philip and Anna, an unlikely duo who come together and apart through a series of events. Both the actors and the film itself radiate an old-school classic charm that rises to unparalleled heights, making indiscreet one to watch out for. We are hardly strangers, and knowing your passion for rules, I'll make the proposition. If you are willing, I am willing. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.